joined this firm of ours, Freshfields, in 1986, and I've been a corporate lawyer ever since. Uh, within that, you know, that broad title of corporate lawyer, I've done all sorts of different things in all sorts of different countries. Uh, and now I've, I've drifted from being a proper lawyer into, into management, and I'm now the senior partner of Freshfields, which is like a chairman. So it's my job uh, to chair the firm's board, to help set the strategy, to try and set the tone of the firm. My first school, I really remember, was uh, one in Africa, uh, which was hardly a normal school in a tiny little town in the middle of landlocked Africa. But it was great fun. Uh, it was a very outdoorsy little school. Uh, I don't remember learning a single thing of any use. But I did have a short, sharp shock at the end of it all. I was about six or seven when my parents suddenly said I was going back to England to go to school. And this box of school uniform arrived from Harrods in the middle of the African jungle. And I had to put on this little uniform, and I'd never worn the uniform before. And was then put on a plane and dispatched back to England. And then I came to school here in England. And that's, that's the first vivid memory I have of actually learning anything. The thing that I enjoyed most was the subjects that involved reading because in Africa there was no television, as you'd imagine, and no videos in those days. So I was a passionate reader. And from that school, again, uh, you know, a big challenge having arrived from one culture into, into another. Uh, I had the same challenge because my parents suddenly announced that I was going to go to school in New Zealand. So I was dispatched from a little school in England to a school, whatever it was, 12,000 miles away in New Zealand. Uh, so again, a big cultural challenge and shock of moving from one place to another. But much the same. I remember being, you know, terribly worried on the day I arrived, but leaving it thinking it was the best place in the world. My first job was uh, delivering milk around the hill top villages of my hometown in, in New Zealand, which was very hard work, pushing and carrying crates of milk around. I then uh, graduated to becoming a gardener. I can't say, though, that at any stage in my years at school did I ever think of becoming a lawyer. So the fact that I did was a complete shock to me afterwards. My parents were very supportive uh, throughout uh, school, and I think that made a huge difference to me. Um, neither of them had gone to university, uh, and they were quite keen that I did, uh, so they were always encouraging me to, to think that way from, from early on. And my father's a very practical hands, sort of hands-on merchant, and he had visions of me building bridges, I think, and being an engineer, uh, and not someone who's going to sit around uh, being paid by the hour to, to doodle and write and think. Anyway, eventually um, I decided to go to university uh, and uh, I thought I ought to do a, an arts type subject um, and uh, then I thought I ought to do one that might conceivably lead on to a job so I decided to read law. Uh, my father, who was a soldier, uh, always said that the last thing he wanted his, his children to be were politicians or lawyers. So in, a, in an act of rebellion I decided to be a lawyer. I had no idea what being a lawyer involved. But having spent, you know, all together, I guess, about six years at university reading law, uh, then my father then started to write me letters. He lived miles away at the time, saying, get a job. Uh, so after that, I thought, well, I'd better become a proper lawyer, not just a, someone wasting life at university. Uh, but my first proper job was after university in New Zealand, before university in England, when I was a judge's clerk at the uh, Court of Appeal and High Court in New Zealand. And that job involved doing research for the judges, helping them write their first drafts of the judgments, sometimes going to watch the trials as they progressed. Um, and that I really enjoyed. I've been in, in this firm uh, for 26 years. I definitely have some weaknesses. I am useless at organisation and administration. So once I recognised that, I had to find ways in which you know, I could make the most of people who had those talents and those skills in, in being part of the package of of what we offered as a firm or on a particular client team. So I think equally understanding your weaknesses is a strength if you can do it and learning to compensate for them. And uh, I certainly have plenty of those. Money doesn't motivate me uh, just by itself, but I, I think the fact that we are a successful organisation and we're well rewarded for what we do uh, by any measure, relative or absolute, you know, is, is hardly unhelpful from anybody's perspective. I think um, in developing a, a career, people uh, have all sorts of influences and mentors, and it would be odd, I think, if people had one, and I certainly had a number. Uh, early on in my career, I realised that if you're going to make progress, you've got to learn to take the best bits from many different people, because none of us, uh, obviously including me, are perfect. 
uh, there have been huge challenges, don't get me wrong, you know, success doesn't come without effort and without hard work and without careful thought about what you need to do to develop yourself. But I don't think there's anybody who's stood in my way or tried to make life difficult. I'd only been back in England having lived virtually all my life outside it, you know, for a year. So it was not as if there was a sort of a, an obvious path for me to follow and people who were, you know, naturally cheering me on. So I had to make my own way. But I always felt it was a meritocracy, somewhere that with hard work and careful thought and application, you know, I could make my way.